Welcome back. This is the week 11 of my learn Python with Google Video Log. This episode comes after uh, four weeks uh, from my previous video log. It was uh, about the end of April uh, with the final video related to the course using Python to interact with the operative system when I got my certificate. Uh, since then, I took a few days of break. Then, early in May, I started working on a bit more of my consolidation plan and since the Python course for beginners in Italian that I was recording uh, was also completed I decided to go through everything back again so I started recording a new course uh, in for, for Python which is the Python Crash Course 2020 but this time it's in English so make sure you check it out uh, there are already 10 episodes online I will leave a link um, to the video in the description uh, or uh, to the video playlist in the description or you can click the link over my head and I spent the first two weeks of May actually working on the new course and publishing the first episodes covering the basics of Python from the uh, basic data types to conditions and loops and I also um, spent some time experimenting uh, coding application using a graphical user interface uh, with the graphical user interface using Python and among the uh, experiments I created these um, simple applications show you the first one uh, was this calculator when you click here this uh, window it opens and you can make calculations uh, like sums so or you can multiply uh, and so on. Uh, you can perform the basic operations uh, and I was planning to add an history like the popular popular calculator in of Windows uh, but that's just a um, basic um, project that I was working on and then I made this uh, weather app. It is this is also very simple. The only thing that it does for now is output the weather in average and the date and the minimum temperature, the maximum temperature, and if it's raining or light raining. And this nice icon on the left that's still a, a basic project. Uh, if I want, I can keep working on it. But that was just to experiment with REST APIs from the uh, UK weather forecast provider I can't remember the name if you are interested in playing with it I can leave the link in the description and then I made this address book with the crude so you can create, update and delete records so Fabio uh, and then you type an address somewhere uh, London and then wherever you want if you want you can leave this um, field blank and then you click this button on records and when you click this uh, you can query the database and you will see the records that you uh, added to the database that are output here in this other window you can edit what you uh, clicking on this button you can edit it and update what's in there if you want to do that you can do that and then this nice window pops up and tells you that everything was done successfully you can query again the database and see the uh, the updated record or you can delete it so you, this window pops up and asks you if you want to continue yes or no if you type no, nothing's happened. You can keep querying the database and the record is still here. Otherwise, you click on delete, you press yes, and the record is gone. When you click the database, you will not have any record. If I can drag the window over, yeah, you see, there will be nothing in here. And uh, I was experimenting also with a Python and REST API uh, using a, jo a job API uh, from read so you click this uh, application that I made 
and what it does is actually fetch all the data from the read.co.uk UK API and then you can click on the page if you want and you can see a set of uh, a selected list of jobs uh, using the basic um, the default settings so otherwise you can call the application manually from the terminal and you will be able to set up different um, queries for the records that you want to fetch from the API. And that is the Python crash course. So you will be able to see to watch from the first to the 10th episode. And then where was here? And so, um, but um, around the mid of May, I started working on a new course. Uh, I mean, started following the third course of the series of six related to the Google IT automation with Python professional certificate, which is this one that you see on the screen. And this time the course was uh, not much related to Python, despite doing the examples we used Python as a programming language, uh, but we covered uh, version control systems. Uh, and so for those who do not know what a version control system is, it's actually a software that helps developers to keep track of project history, so of, of their code, uh, working on the code while keeping a, a clear track of what has been done in the past. And you can perform a lot of operations, um, store a remote, a remote a repository uh, online and then work locally uh, where you will have a copy of this repository and you can make changes and uh, send the changes to the remote repository when the work is done and you can use this uh, to collaborate with others. So um, the course was uh, structured in four uh, weeks, four modules, one module per week. Um, I started it around mid of May and I completed the course yesterday uh, and I earned a new certificate. Uh, so there are three more to go. And I was already familiar with um, the version control um, system and specifically with Git and SVN also. And uh, I'm not a fan of GitHub, but um, I use uh, Bitbucket, which is a similar uh, platform for hosting your uh, remote repositories. And so it didn't take me much to complete this course. Uh, and during the course, we started Git and how to use GitHub. Uh, to collaborate with others from the basic mm, git commands like git init to initialize a new repository locally to interactive rebasing and the report repository. We did a lot of projects around these uh, topics and first we, we got an introduction to VCS and then we saw how, to, how it was done before this uh, software came um, into the market, uh, so using a different patch. And we did some products and some quizzes uh, with questions. Then uh, we saw what is a version control and uh, we got an introduction to Git and how to set it up locally on your computer. Later we used Git to track files. We saw the basic Git flow and how to create Git commits messages and and then again another quiz and a graded assessment, which I passed with 100% of score. And then the second module, so the week number two, uh, was about um, how to use Git locally, uh, skip the staging area, um, get more info about changes that we applied, delete and rename files, and then more products and quizzes. And then we followed up with uh, how to undo things. Uh, so undo things before uh, commit changes or amend commits, roll back, identify commits and use git revert. 
and some more products at this point with other questions and then we start to looking at branches and merging uh, so what the branch is, how to create it and how to work with it uh, and then we start how to merge branch, uh, branches and how to work to resolve merge conflicts and then more products uh, with quizzes and then another graded assessment for the end of the module 2 which again I passed with 100% of score and then the module 3 and 4 uh, were um, that I completed last week, they were about, they were more interesting because they moved, um, they start covering more advanced topics and since I know already how to use Git, uh, that was for me more interesting, however I must admit that I, uh, I was able to, um, to take from this uh, from this course a good refresh uh, about Git and mostly uh, let me write down some uh, a nice and the comment list uh, reference for the future that I will post on my blog later on and so week three uh, in week three we worked uh, with the remote repositories um, while in week four we started looking at how to uh, collaborate with others using the remote repository. So uh, the um, uh, the top contents of the week three were a brief overview of GitHub and uh, other platforms like my favorite Bitbucket and how to use a remote repository and how to fetch changes and then again more quizzes and then we worked on solving conflicts. So merge conflicts when you uh, start looking at the uh, we started looking at the pull merge push workflow and the rebasing, uh, some best practices uh, for collaboration, then more quizzes and another graded assessment, which again I passed with 100% of score. And then finally, uh, we saw uh, in the module 4 we had the final project. Uh, so we before that we saw how to manage projects and collaborate with others, track issues and a quick introduction to continuous integration and then quiz and to close the course we did the final credit assessment where we used uh, quick labs uh, to interact with the remote server, clone a remote remote story, fix a local script, uh, fix a script locally and then we used the git flow to update the remote repository and send a pull request to the repository owner and then finally I've got this certificate uh, which is the third uh, of the series so I got three more courses to uh, to do so um, that's it for this episode I will start the fourth course probably in a couple of weeks time uh, so the fourth course of the series uh, Google IT Automation with Python Professional Certificate and in the meantime follow my free Python Crash Course 2020 and the link is in the description and if you enjoyed this video leave a link leave a like uh, or comment the video um, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that's it uh, see you next week for another episode. Take care. Bye.